would you stand up? He's on the book. And now that's Paul, yeah. not Jimmy. What we've done is we failed to tell them. And I apologize for that. I look for Paul. Well, I, I'm glad to say Brother Jim's going to do something. We're all time trying to get to Yeah, I think you're all right. It works. Caden, Caden, would you give me a cup of water, please? It's always a pleasure to be here. All of us need a home. All of us need assurance. And I think all of us need love. And that's uh, going to be my subject today. Uh, I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Corinthians. And I'm going to dwell for just a few minutes on the 13th chapter. Love can be defined in a lot of different ways. Uh, is there anybody in here that doesn't love food? Raise your hand. I didn't think I'd get any results. We're going to sample some good after a while. I was thinking a while ago as we took communion. It's one of the things Jesus said, don't ever quit doing you do this till I come back. He said, this is the way you remember me. I gave something for you. I gave my life till you could have eternal life. And I thought, what a shame that we had a shot at eternal life. We had a shot at being immortal like the angels, like the saints of God. And we squandered it for what? Scale of 1 to 10. It's none of my business where you're at this morning. I make no judgment on any man. All of us know where we're at. We know our situation. We know it with God. We're either contented, we're either somewhere in the middle, or we're running. And you can't tell me about that because I've been in all three conditions. And the only one it's pleasant is to have your sins forgiven regardless of what they are. God doesn't hold sin against us. You need to know that because they will, as, uh, the devil, old scratch, he will come and kick you every <coughs> once in a while and say, you remember doing this. And we just say, get away from me. Scale of 10. Hopefully, if you're down the scale, before this day is done, you'll move up a notch or two. You'll move up a notch or two. There's love between man and the woman, your mate. There's a love between you and your children, and both those are different. They're different. It's all kind of different kinds of love, of food, uh, uh, whatever. But the primary one that will help us with all of those others is the love of God. Do you know the love of God? Did He turn you around? Has He changed your life? Or are you still living in sin? We need to measure that. Somewhere you're going to have to make a decision. And, and in my span of almost 55 years or 56 or whatever before I ran from God and I could run no further. And I hope if you're running today that He runs you in the ground. That you get down so low that there's no peace in your life. You say, preacher, that is not a nice thing to say. No, when you get there, you'll do something about it. In my estimation, and that's all it is. God wouldn't be fair if He didn't speak to you somewhere, sometime, someplace in your cycle of life. And He speaks to you through the Holy Spirit. And you get to thinking about heaven and hell. You get to thinking about happiness and unhappiness. 
you get to thinking about all kinds of things. That's a one-shot thing, maybe. Because you cannot be converted or changed. You cannot be born again except the Holy Spirit of God convict you of your sins. You can have an emotional experience. You can get to feeling so sorry for what you've done to someone or somebody else or that you've been a rotten person. And you get that mixed up with salvation. I know. I tried that. It lasts for a couple, three weeks, and the next thing you know, you're right back out in the world and nothing never really changed. You had an emotional experience. But were you born again? By the Spirit of God. Jesus told Nicodemus, and that still goes for today. He said, you must be born again. Thank you, Jimmy. See, and then I thought hey, I thought there was a lot of just getting it saying. But it's a must. It's the only thing that will instill the love of God in your heart. That's not going to say that you're not going to have bad days, good days, and everything in between. That's a test of time and with God. I'd like to stand before Him and somebody said, oh, to be pure and white, I'd like to stand before Him wounded, bloodied by life. Not enough people want to be warriors for Christ and that's exactly what you are if you've committed your life to Him. You are a warrior in the service of Christ. We forget too many times what He must have looked like just before he took his last breath. <coughs> love of man and wife. Love of children. If you don't have the love of God in your life, you really can't even do a good job at that. You can't appreciate your mate until God touches your life. You can't really love your children until God touches your life. Yeah, you can go through the motions. But until you are a witness to the true thing, you'll never know true love until you know the love of God. I particularly, I, I like this one. I really do it. It's a summation that Paul gave to the Corinthians. Here's what, here's what the love of God will do for you. Here's what the love of God will do for you. Fleshly love cannot give it. We'll mess it up. We mess our children's lives up. We mess our own life up. We mess our wives' life up. We just mess up. Unless God and His love has changed your life. If you've had an emotional experience, don't get that mixed up with eternal life and being born again. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Because on the judgment day of God, the only one that He will accept is those that He's put His mark on children that will be obedient to the Word of God. Forget about what you thought about it. It's what God says about it. That's one of our problems today in the world that we live. Everybody's trying to tell God how to run his business. Instead of humbling ourselves down and saying that God is in charge, it'll make you sleep better tonight. It'll make you better to your family. It'll make you better to your neighbor. It will just make you a better person. It'll make you a better young person. This message is just day for you. Yeah, teenagers sitting here, you better believe it. I'm going to hammer you today. Because the devil is looking for you. You can do two or three things out there and never get over it. 
That wasn't so in my time, my teenage years. You can make a few mistakes and you're okay. You make a mistake or two now, you sealed your doom. You better listen who you run with. You better know who you're friends with. And if they try to tell you something, take a look at their life and see if they're any better off than you are. Misery loves company. On Sue and their monument out here, we had just a few little words out, out of that because it was probably our favorite place in the world. Listen to what the love of God will do. Now, fleshly love, listen to this as I read through it. In chapter 13 of the book of 1 Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. We live in a little county, a little city uh, uh, of West Liberty. Do you think people don't know each other? One of the worst things you could ever do is be untrue to yourself, who you are. It doesn't matter who they think you are. They don't matter what you so they say about you. It makes no difference if you're anchored in Christ. Not what I say to you, but it's what I do to you that makes the difference. I can sell love and compassion, but until you see it, it's not true. And that's what he meant. We become to make that sound, but it's empty and it just makes a sound. And though I have the gift of prophecy and the understanding, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Now there's a whole lot of power there. You say, man, if I can move a mountain, or if I could do this, so what? Move your mountain. What have you done? What's it done to you inside? What's it made you feel like inside? Are you contented with God in your present state? If you're not, you better get into line because you may not get a few more breaths. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. You try it. You'll find out. I owe Him everything that I am. And I pray to Him for everything I am not. I owe everything to Him. I really do. And though I bestow all of my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it prophesies me nothing. See, there was nothing there. There was an action, but there was no strength in it. It was just something we done. And those are all good things. Helping the poor. Yes, absolutely. Helping people that need help. Absolutely. But it needs to come from a loving heart, not a habit. Not something we just do so that somebody else might see or know. Love, here's what, here's what the love of God will do. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked and thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Can you tell me what life is going to throw at you tomorrow? Anybody want to do that? Raise your hand. I need to talk to you. That's how unstable human life is. 
what we've done is we've, I, I hope I have never misled anybody in my preaching. Preachers need to be aware because they lead people off. Especially in funerals. There's been a lot of them in my life. But I've never misled anybody. We are responsible for our sins. If we're to be born again, we've got to do what Jesus said. Nothing more, nothing less. Listen, you're free when you're a Christian. The only commandment you've got is what God has told you to do, and they'll be good for you. You need to hear what I'm saying, or you can turn me off. It's your option. It's not going to affect me one way or the other. I've done and made my peace calling in election sure. As long as I remain faithful, and I intend to. I thank the Lord at my age, I still have a little bit thinking the ability. But God will take care of that too, won't He? Yes, He will. We're in good hands before one of His children. He will take care of that. Not to worry. Love never fails. God has never failed in His plan of salvation. And believe me, He's got a plan. And you ain't going to rush it up and you ain't going to shorten it. You can't do a thing about it. You say, that makes me feel helpless. You should feel helpless. You want to tell God how to end things? You want to tell God how to run things? You want to tell God who should be in the church? You want to tell God who shouldn't be in the church? Go ahead. You're not going to change a thing. It is locked down. It's been locked down since day one. It will stay locked down until the trumpets blast. And you say, I, I don't feel like that. You need to do something about it. It doesn't do any good to live to be a hundred year old and live in misery. I'm not talking about physical, I'm talking about the mind. We need to get that thing settled. We need to get it out of the way. We need to make that decision. And then we need to live and wait upon the Master. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. It is per perfection can be obtained. Not in this life. The day that he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter thou in to the joys of the Lord. Now you're going to hear that or you're going to hear him say, Get out of here. You lovers of iniquity, I never knew you. Who are you? We say, well, Lord, we have done this and that. He said, get out of here. You know why? They had never been born again. The love of God did not dwell in their life. Perfection will come. But we got to make an effort. Here's what it was. Paul admitted it. We need to admit it. When I first started thinking about homecoming, I was thinking about, what am I going to do this sermon? I said, Giants and Midgets. And they said, what? Giants and Midgets? I'm a giant. You know what makes you a giant? It's not your size. It's what's in your heart. And there's midgets. 
they get bent out of shape about everything in the world. Talk about people, gossip, cuss, cry, and go on. You're a midget. You're a child of God. You are a child. That's all I'm going to say about that. Maybe I'll save it for another sermon. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but when that, but then I shall know just as also I am known. Now, I want to close with this one. And now, abide faith, we have it. Hope, we have it. Love, we have obtained it through obedience to the Word of God. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The love of God will do all those things for us. The church in this country and the Word of God is under attack. There's no question about it. If you can't see that, you shut your eyes to the truth. How much more it's going to come under? I don't know. Only God does. Somewhere down the line, it may cost a man his life to stand in this pulpit and say that sin is sin. Probably in my span of life, I'm not going to see too much more. But my heart bleeds for those who are going to be living. And you say, well, that's not very uplifting. I'm not going to tell you something that your ears are itching for and say, preacher, tell me soft things. I never did. Soft things did not change my life when I sat back there about where Paul was at. Mary took on the responsibility. And there was love in this place. And all of them are gone just about it. Essie is still here. Gay is still here. Outside of that, that's probably the only two people that can remember the day that mine assumed and I. I had took all I wanted. I was tired of worrying about my spirit and my soul. And I was mad enough to get on my feet and walk up this aisle and stand before that crowd and said, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I was baptized down here in this little creek. We didn't have all this good stuff in. We padded our seats and still don't have the attendance. We've our condition. We still don't have the attendance when those old saints sat and used fans to fan to keep cool and they sat on a hard bed, but they had the love of God in them. Unless we get back to that, that your only plan of escape is through Him, His love, and doing what He said. And you say, Preacher, I can't do that. Good luck. You're going to need it when you take your last breath. You cry out to God. There's people today that will tell you you can do that. I'm going to tell you. You need to hear it. You need to believe it. You need to repent of your sin. You need to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Master, the Son of God. You need to be buried with Him in baptism for the remission of sin. Not walking, not washing away the filth of the flesh, but in nature of a good conscience before God. You think you don't need to be baptized today? You're better than Jesus Christ. Let me give you this point. Jesus came to John. And he told John, he said, I need to be baptized by you. And John couldn't believe it. Because John 
Here was Jesus' response. Suffer it to be so because it behooves us to fulfill all righteousness. That's the fulfillment of righteousness in the nature of a good conscience before God. Now, if you can meet somebody on the road and have a car wreck and get all of that stuff in there at once, I'll say you might have a shot. I don't believe it. I believe you do it now. I believe you do it now. You take care of that. If you're a teenager, take care of it. It'll give you strength to get through your teen years. Elderly people, if you haven't done it, do it because God is going to require of us in a short time, age-wise, that we're going to have to appear before Him. Do it now. I have a little trouble finding words to tell you how I feel about you, all of you. I don't think there's a stranger in this room. I'm a better person because I've known you. My life has been better because of knowing you. And I pray that everything will be well with you. We're going to stand and sing one of the old songs of the church. Heaven will surely be worth it all. <laughs> Heaven will surely be worth it all. make sure I'm right? I'm sorry, Danny. I want to thank Danny and Paul. These guys sit up here they take care of me. I did the same thing as I tried to help Charlie Frederick and Sewell Hamilton and those fellas. Uh, nothing ain't good that you've got that's good in you unless you pass it on or give it away to somebody. And that's how they're going to remember you. It's what you give back to the Lord. If you're here today, you need to do that. You just need to do what I told you to do. If you can find me anything else where God told you to do it, read it to me. You need to do that. You need to take care of it. You're not sure about your eternal destiny. You need to take care of that today and find real love and happiness in Jesus Christ. Oh.